Look at that big old fish, guys. Absolutely. That's about, I don't know, that's probably eight, nine, 10 pound rainbow. We got that on power bait, maybe in three feet of water here on a mud flat at Collins Lake on the guide trip with me. I'm Kel Kellogg. That big old fish. So, uh -huh. Awesome. awesome. Yeah. Howdy guys, Kel Kellogg here. I've got a great tip for you guys today. It's a, it's a more valuable tip than something that's bait specific or location specific or situation specific. It's more of a fishing, a trout fishing philosophy kind of tip. Let me paint the picture for you. I'm here at Collins Lake. The water was already cold to begin with. It was 47 degrees yesterday. When I get up this morning, it's down to 46 very cold water the water is very muddy i might have a foot to 18 inches of visibility okay so though i had those two handicaps right out of the box and on top of that i had an absolutely brutal north wind at one point um, we were coming back up the lake i was in probably two two and a half foot white caps it was just just very challenging on the lake today what did i do I didn't give up. You know, sometimes you've got to fish on any given day. So giving up was not an option. So I assessed the situation. If I had my way, I would have sat someplace and I would have fished power bait all day long. But with that strong wind, that just wasn't possible. We did get in our shots with some bait. We caught fish on power bait, but to do it, I was throwing out an anchor and I was just basically slow drifting, dragging the anchor, and I kept throwing lines out of the front of the boat and trying to control the boat's front end as much as I could with the trolling motor. And that paid off for us. We did get a fish doing that. Um, but you know, my, my main technique today was something that hasn't been working at all. It was trolling, it was power trolling. When I assessed the wind, I, you know, slow trolling wasn't really an option for me. Um, so I knew I had to troll fairly quickly. Um, my target speed was anywhere from 2.2 to about 2.7. I picked some very aggressive lures, but my thought process went like this. I want maximum color, maximum vibration. And this is what I settled on. Let me grab these rods here. These are the rods I was pulling today. Um, everything's been shallow, so I didn't even have a lead core rod in the mix. Everything was top lined. Um, I was pulling a magnum metal head just like that, um, bright green, and I did rig that up with a stinger treble because I knew there was a good possibility of getting short strikes. So that was my center rod, had that back 180 feet. Um, the rod I was pulling off the port side was a uh, Fire Tiger Countdown Rapala. Don't know what number that is, but you know, it's. Uh, what is that about two two and a half inches long um that worked well and the final thing i was pulling is a lure that honestly i don't pull often enough i was pulling one of my speed shad um ton of vibration it had some red on it it has a lot of flash um you know nice contrasting colors dark on the back light on the belly it's got that metallic kind of greenish yellow on the sides those were my power trolling lures I never changed lures at all today. I was very confident in those offerings. It was more about covering water, keeping them in the zone. I think my deepest bait today was probably three feet deep and uh, we ground on them. You gotta grind. On days when you know it's, it's gonna be tough, the grinding is more important than the lure changes. You don't wanna get out here and be like, I'm gonna try a needlefish. I'm gonna try a Castmaster. I'm gonna try a Rapala now. Well, I'm gonna try a pink Rapala now, but now I'm gonna try a white Rapala. That's probably not gonna get you anywhere. Assess the situation, fish to your strengths. I knew the best option today was power bait, and power bait definitely paid off for us, but the way we had to fish it was very unconventional and it was difficult. Um, trolling, again, not the best option, but I made it our best option for the day based on the conditions. And that, that north wind was just a killer today. And that's what made trolling the most viable option because I could stay on the move. I could move fairly quickly 
And if I ground and I kept the baits in the zone, I could get hit. Now here are the other keys. I tried going up in the narrows. It was more sheltered up there. The water temperature was about four tenths of a degree lower up there. That doesn't sound like much, but when the water's 46 degrees, that's a lot. It's a lot to cold blooded fish. So as soon as I went up there, I made one pass up there. I checked the temp. That wasn't happening. I found the highest temperatures consistently along the east side of the lake, anywhere from two to four tenths higher than the rest of the lake. Well, that was the area I needed to fish. I needed to find the warmest water, water clarity. If there was an area with clearer water, I would have I would have worked that area, but the water clarity is about the same everywhere. So I found the warmest area I could find, and I worked in the zone where I knew the fish, the most active fish were. We've been bait fishing up here. Wes has been out here. I was up here with Wes before that. Everything has been four feet deep or less for us, whether it's on power bait or lures. So that is the zone I worked and uh, it was a hard day, but guess what? It was a rewarding day. Anybody can come out here when the conditions are optimum and catch a bunch of fish. It's when the conditions are difficult, that's what separates the guys that have done their homework, the guys that think the game from the guys who are just casual, the guys that go out, pull the same lure every day, use the same technique every day in the same areas, they, if you take their results over the course of a year, they have pretty mediocre results. It's guys that are able to assess the conditions, assess the cards that they've been dealt, and adapt accordingly. Those are the guys that are more consistently successful throughout the course of the season. Anyway, I hope you can take that advice to heart. Um, put it away in your memory bank always think fishing and when you're done fishing for the day think about how you could have been more successful on any given day out on the water what did you learn um, my guys they didn't take home limits today but they told me both of them told me getting off the boat we learned a ton about trout fishing today and i hope they can put that to practice i hope you can put this this video to practice in your upcoming trips I'm Cal Kellogg, I'm out of here for now. If you are looking for trout gear, rods, reels, I don't know if we have any reels now, certainly rods, um, lures, stuff like that. Or if you'd like to book a one-on-one -on -one fishing trip with me out on the waters of Collins Lake, go on over to fishhuntshoot.com. You're gonna find all the gear you need over there. And you can also check out our guiding calendar and come out here and learn the finer points of trout fishing while reeling in big, beautiful Collins Lake trout. I'm Kel Kellogg, you have a great day and I'll catch you next time right here on YouTube, guys. Thanks for all the support.